him actually reporting on stuff instead of just being the editor that he was in the comics. Now the trailer very much gives us a reason as to why Peter and Doctor Strange end up going head to head. You very much learn that if the villains are sent back to their home worlds, they'll be killed. And that's why, dun dun dun, there's no way home or off that bridge. Now in their own realities, the Spider-Men of their universes were responsible for their deaths and this is why Peter feels guilty. The only villain who wasn't killed originally was Sandman, but from what I've been told on the movie, we will end up learning what happened after the events of Spider-Man 3. Sandman apparently says that Peter forgave him, but Strange will inform us that they crossed paths years later and he was killed during that fight. Take that with a pinch of salt, but it makes sense as to why Sandman is wrestling with being good and bad. The first trailer did show him stopping an electro blast, and you could catch what looked like the pair fighting, so that just makes a lot of sense. I love how the villains are just really fighting for their survival, and that added humanity we get in this new look is great, and it just really helps to flesh out why Peter is desperate to save them. There's also a giant sand fist, and this is of course very reminiscent of the comics, in which Sandman would often use that as his main attack. Now in the first trailer, we got a good look at the magical cube, and in this we learn more about how it's holding the villains in place at the Sanctorum prison. Peter will steal this and this will make Strange chase him across New York, and then into the mountains on the back of a train. I love how there's this real conflict between them, and Strange is of course obsessed with protecting reality, whereas Peter very much just wants to protect life. It's a great conflict between them, and throughout the fight we're gonna see things like the cape grabbing Peter and so on. Now we get a shot of Electro and I absolutely love the upgrade that they've given to Jamie Foxx. From what I've been told, the character will warp into the MCU and it'll be very reminiscent of the opening of a Terminator film in which the killer robot arrives. This will be at a power plant which is where he'll steal an engineer's jacket and then he'll get rid of this to don what we see in the trailer. The mask looks amazing and it's very reminiscent of his look in the comics but they've upgraded it to make it so that it's electricity that creates it instead of it just being cloth. You might also notice that they've changed the colouring of his electricity from blue to yellow. This is more in line with the comics too, and it further brings things closer to the way that the live action characters are presented in the MCU. Now there's a lot more action shots, and we see the three villains, namely Sandman, Electro and the Lizard. The villain will once more be played by Reese Iffins, who I'm sure you know from the Amazing Spider-Man series. In that, Dr. Kurt Connors had lost his arm, and he was trying to use the healing factor of lizards in order to find a way to regenerate his limb. However, this backfired, and though it grew back, it turned him into a giant hulking lizard at the same time. Now what I love about Connors, and well most of the villains in this trailer, is that he's somewhat of a tragic character. I was absolutely obsessed with him in the 90s cartoon, as it just fascinated me watching his arm grow back, and then him changing to this hulking beast. Now there's a moment which the three villains swing forward, and if you look closely, you'll see that the lizard gets hit by something, but it's been CGI'd out. I have no idea what this is, but if I had to hazard a guess, I'd say that it's Andrew Garfield and they've just removed him for this first look. Very strange moment, but yeah, definitely something worth paying attention to. Now we get a moment in which MJ falls and Peter jumps after her. Not only is this a slight callback to one of the illusions in Far From Home, but it's very reminiscent of the death of Gwen Stacy from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. That moment also pulled from the comics in which the Green Goblin threw Gwen off the side of the Brooklyn Bridge. Peter caught her, but she died from either the impact of the ball or because the breakneck speed of the web was literally breakneck. Not, not good, not a good pun that. Anyway, he wrestled with the guilt over this for some time, and I love how this kind of hints towards the comic storyline and Garfield's films. It would be pretty wild if MJ died at this moment, and hopefully she survives the fall. Now Strange very much hints towards other people coming through the portal, and I think this will of course be Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. The trailer was very much about showcasing the villains, and I think that they would have teased other ones if it was someone like a Venom or so on. In the post credit scene of Let There Be Carnage, he was brought to the MCU, so we kinda already know that his entrance wasn't in this scene. So I'm really hoping that we get to see them all come together, but unfortunately this trailer doesn't end the debate of whether they're in the film or not, though it does definitely tease it. Now as I mentioned earlier, I think this might be happening when we see the blast come out from the Statue of Liberty and that kind of ties into the portal opening up and then them coming across. Also, you probably notice that there's lots of scaffolding at the location and not to go too far into what's been leaked, but yeah, Andrew Garfield is indeed the werewolf because this is the exact same scene. Now I'm recording this at 1.30am in the morning and I'm also about to head to Edinburgh in 6 hours just to take some time out so I will be back with another video in the week to just talk about all the easter eggs that I missed in this one because 
I'm sure there's a few. I've not had coffee, guys. Just let me be. I've tried to be as thorough as possible, but yeah, make sure you let me know in the comments below if there's anything I missed, and I'll be sure to cover it on the next video. Now, for the next two parts of the video, I want to do my reaction first, and then we can get into more of the plot leaks. I thought I'd switch the order I normally do, as you might just want to hear my thoughts, but not any of the spoilers for the film. Anyway, I absolutely love the way that the movie is shaping up to be, and if they manage to stick the landing on this, then it could be one of the best comic book movies of all time. Spider-Man is one of the medium's most popular characters, and he's right up there next to Batman and Superman in terms of stature and legacy. The character has had a number of amazing films, and his rogues gallery is arguably one of the best as well. To have this all coming together for the movie makes it feel like an epic for a number of reasons. Director John Watts recently told Empire Magazine that this movie feels like Spider-Man Endgame, and it certainly comes across that way. I think it's going to be absolutely filled with easter eggs, and I can't wait to see what happens when the movie is released. They're really putting everything they can into it, and I think it's going to be one of the biggest movies of all time, even with the pandemic. People are just desperate to see it, and Sony have actually made people hungry for it by holding off on the marketing, because they know that if they keep some secrets, then the hype is just going to be even higher. It's a great second trailer, and the two of these together are absolutely amazing teasers for a film that I really can't wait to see. Now, as hyped as I am, I have to keep a balanced head, and I know that because of everything that's going on in this movie, that there is a chance it's gonna suck. They really have to deal with the cliffhanger from Far From Home, introduce the new villains, characters, and also have a great story too, so it doesn't feel like we're just watching fight scene after fight scene with the villains of yesteryear. It's going to be difficult, but Marvel have shown us time and time again that they're up to the challenge, and I can't wait to see it when this movie releases. Now that takes us onto the leaks part of the video, and full spoilers ahead from this point onwards. Leaks like this should be taken with a pinch of salt, but some stuff does seem to be what happens in the two trailers, so just know that I won't be casting a spell to make you forget if you go past this point. It's your own bloody fault, you should have stopped the video, you